What is up, you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. This is Gold Pony Crypto. And so, I made a video a while back on the Crypto.com NFT platform, and it did pretty darn well. But the most popular comment that I kept getting was, how do you go about minting your own NFTs on the Crypto.com NFT platform? And at the time, that feature didn't exist when I made that video because it was a while back. So now I'm going to make a video dedicated to that question that I got over and over again. And so in order to do this, I actually paid an artist to create unique original art for this little very, very cheap NFT collection that I am putting out. They're gonna be a dollar each. So it's nothing crazy, you guys. And I'm gonna follow everybody on Twitter that actually buys one of these things because I'll be able to see your Twitter account mixed with your crypto.com NFT profile. So that's how I'm gonna be able to find you and follow you back if you want that. That's the utility I can offer. So wanted to mention that. But anyways, in this video, I'm going to be walking you through the process from very start to very finish. I'm going to tell you how I ended up getting approved to list my NFTs on the crypto.com NFT platform and also the many mistakes that I made along the way so you can learn from my mistakes. So if you're planning on listing an NFT in the crypto.com NFT platform, be sure you watch this entire video because I am going to go in depth here to help all you guys out. And as always, before we get started, nothing in this video should be considered financial advice. Please do your own research. This video is simply for educational and entertainment purposes. Let's get started. So obviously the first step is going to be to create a crypto.com backslash NFT account. So I'm assuming that everybody watching this video already has one of those because that's the easiest thing to do. So I'm not even going to go over that. But once you already have done that, there's going to be a few tabs under your profile main screen. You're going to want to hit the created tab. And so when you do that, you're going to see the option to apply to become a creator. And so next I'm going to look down at my phone here so I don't miss anything. But the next screen is essentially going to give you an online form to fill out information to apply to become a creator on crypto.com NFT. So first place you put your full legal name. I put my full legal name. Obviously I'm blanking it out here because my full legal name is Gold Pony. So yeah, anyways. Next thing it's gonna ask you is portfolio and website link. And so in this particular spot, I actually put my own personal Twitter account because I was kind of thinking why were they asking this? And the reason that I came to the conclusion with is because they're kind of wanting to identify who you are so they can have a little background information on you. So therefore I put my own personal Twitter account Therefore, they found some background information about me. So that's why I put that there. So next it says, tell us about yourself. And so I included my goals for the actual NFT project of which have very drastically changed because I messed up too many times, quite honestly. And that's what you guys are gonna learn from me here. So I essentially put what I wanted to do, why I wanted to release this NFT and what I wanted to gain out of it more or less. Which by the way, was just bringing together the community really. That's all I was really ever doing it for. So next it has a couple of optional different sections, including your Instagram and Twitter. Twitter profiles and what I took this as is if it's uh, specific to this NFT project that you're creating and you have a specific Twitter or Instagram account going specifically to that NFT project that you're creating, that is where you're gonna wanna link that up. And then the next section is gonna be for additional website or social links. And so in this particular section, this is where I listed that I was a Kronos Crypto.com YouTuber and I wanted to create a video documenting the process of Crypto.com NFT. That's essentially what I put there and that, that was the truth and that's what I'm doing. <laughs> but so next, looking down on my phone yet again, you're gonna wanna check that little box. You're gonna hit submit. And then as far as the time frame for when they approve, first of all, they're gonna send you an email for whether or not you get approved. And quite honestly, it was pretty quick. I'm quicker than I expected. It was probably within 24 hours. So it was literally the next day I got an email back saying that I was approved as a creator. And so then they gave me a link to go ahead and start creating NFTs. And so as I mentioned earlier, at this point, you probably already have your NFTs created. I paid a creator to come up with my base character and traits. And I specifically listed what traits I wanted to have in my NFTs. A lot of them were faith-based because like I put on my Twitter profile, always try to put God first. And that is always what I'm always going to try to do. But so I asked for a cross necklace, I asked for a halo. But one thing that I asked for as well, and this is another lesson that you guys can learn from me, is I asked for a crypto.com necklace and a Bitcoin necklace or a Bitcoin logo and a crypto.com logo incorporated somewhere into the design. Little did I know, I didn't read the fine print before I actually asked the artist to create these things, is that you cannot have any kind of logos in your NFT artwork. So it immediately denied me when I first tried to upload that pony with the crypto.com logo, the crypto.com necklace, because it is it because it said it was violating the terms, which apparently I double checked with the chat in crypto.com NFT on the app 
and they said you cannot have any type of logos whatsoever and that includes the crypto.com logo without permission and it also includes the bitcoin logo as well believe it or not so that is why i had to go back into photoshop bring up all my 50 or so layers and do everything all over again more or less so that, that took a, it took quite a bit to make this video, I'll just put it that way. But so anyways, back to actually creating an NFT, you're gonna wanna go ahead and hit create at the very upper right hand corner of the screen. Then you're gonna hit choose file, and by the way, the file size is going to be 60 megabytes. Several different file types, including JPEG, JPG, PNG files, which is actually what I used, also, GIF, WEBP, and MP4 is coming soon, which is gonna be more or less short videos. But I think GIFs are pretty cool, and I think PNG is the highest quality image if you're going to use a still image. So little advice in case you guys didn't know that already. And so once you actually upload your image, then the preview image is going to show on the uh, right-hand side of the screen, right next to it there, basically. And so next, you're gonna actually name your collectible and give it a description. And let me give you the biggest disclaimer in the world here, because another mistake that I learned from once you name your collectible and even once you put in those words in the description box, the second you hit mint, there's no backspace, there's no erase, and there's no delete. It is 100% on the blockchain and you cannot change a single thing. For example, I put in my description, which was my original plan, was to offer a monthly raffle for my own particular NFT to give away Crow. I'm no longer doing that because the NFTs are only a dollar. So anyway, once they're there, you cannot take them back out. So just keep that in mind and make sure you're 100% what you're putting in those two sections before you actually go ahead and hit mint. And so the next section originally tripped me up because it said add to collection. And then I was like, I haven't created a collection. So you wanna create a collection. And so essentially the way now to create a collection because this is where I had to stop and then go back in, go to my NFTs. And then you're gonna see a section again, I'm looking down on my phone here called create collection. It's gonna be the circle with this little addition sign in the middle of it there. And so once you hit that, you're gonna upload your cover photo and then upload a profile image. And so the cover photo is pretty generic. It's like a YouTube or a Twitter kind of banner that you would put at the top, that's that. And then the profile image can be a static image, but for this, I would recommend using a GIF. So pick like five or six of your NFTs and then make it into a GIF just so that they're constantly rotating because these are the ones that catch most people's attention in my personal opinion. That's what I did, that's what I would recommend. Next, you're gonna wanna create a collection name. My, mine is the Gold Pony Beach Club because the beach is the scene for all of my NFTs. Then you wanna create a collection description. This is where you can usually provide the utility, if anything, or any kind of backstory that you have with the collection. Next, it's gonna ask you to choose categories. I chose, I believe it was art and crypto. It says you can choose up to two. And I remember when searching for an NFT, you can actually search by categories. So if it lets you choose up to two, I would probably recommend choosing up to two because then you have a better opportunity to be found through those searches basically. And then you just hit create collection. And so then back to create, I'm just gonna pick up where I left off on the uh, creation of the NFT here. You're gonna select your two categories, art and crypto, like I said, you're gonna choose the number of editions. And so if you have one of those profile picture collections or something like I did, it's always going to be one. So edition one of one, a little more unique. Um, you can also choose up to 10. So you can make 10 of the exact same NFT if you wanted to, but uh, for this case, I'm just gonna do one of one. Do wanna also mention at this point, it says 10% of royalties go back to the initial creator. So if somebody were to purchase my NFT for a dollar and then resell it on the market for $10, I would get then a dollar from that sale and the seller would get $9. So I wanted to mention that as well because that's kind of a cool feature and that's that's a pretty common 10%. I mean, you see that in DeFi as well. Then you're gonna go ahead and check the box and hit create. And so then it's gonna give you one more opportunity to make any changes. So this is where you take your second and third look before you actually hit mint. Everything looks good then, just go ahead and hit mint. And so then if you go back to my NFTs and you go to the created tab, it should actually show up. And so now your next question is, how do we go about selling my NFT? And so I will say this initial one, it takes approximately, I think it was two to three minutes for it to actually do its mint thing. And then you're able to actually go in and set a price. And so once you actually have that pulled up, you can actually choose a fixed price or an auction price. I chose a fixed price of a whopping dollar. There's a 2% primary fee there. 
and then you can just go ahead and hit post listing and then it will immediately show up in the marketplace. And that's about it for going ahead and creating your collection and listing your NFT. So now in summary, just to take away my biggest mistakes and what I've learned through this entire process here. Make sure you double and triple check every single thing that you do because this is all on a blockchain and it cannot be erased or deleted. Also, make sure you do not include any kind of logos or any kind of trademarked anything because you are not allowed to upload that. It has to be your own original piece of work, whether that be you creating it or you paying an artist to create it. It just cannot have any trademarks or logos. And lastly, if you wanted to support the channel, feel free to buy one of my $1 NFTs. There are 51 of them and I will follow back everyone on Twitter who actually has their Twitter profile linked up to their crypto.com NFT account because I can see everybody who is purchasing my NFTs because I just go to activity and I'm able to see that. So if you want to support the channel because I paid money to have this video made, then feel free to do that. I would appreciate it. And of course, if you have any questions about anything I didn't cover in this process, go ahead and put it in the description box below. I am happy to answer them as always. I always read them all. Do appreciate you guys watching. That is about it for this one. You guys feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen for different cryptocurrency updates. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into crypto.com, Crow and Kronos. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.